Today's new images of 3i Atlas just changed the conversation again. This is a fresh update, and it's coming from high contrast contour work alongside the raw frame. Same object, same moment. Two very different ways of looking at it. What immediately stands out is the sunward facing structure. It's not subtle here. The contour is pulled out clearly and the raw image confirms it's not a processing artifact. That matters because features pointing toward the sun aren't what we expect to dominate at this stage. We're not talking about brightness spikes or noise. We're talking about persistent structure that survives different analysis methods. So this isn't a claim, it's an observation, and it's why today's update deserves a closer look. Let's break down what this image is actually showing. Let's stay on this image and slow it down. On the left, you're seeing a contour enhanced view. This isn't adding structure, it's tracing brightness gradients that already exist in the data. Every closed contour marks a real change in intensity. Notice how the contours aren't circular. They're stretched, asymmetric, and pushed forward. That tells us the inner coma isn't expanding evenly in all directions. The strongest gradient is sunward. Now compare that with the raw frame on the right. No contour math, no edge extraction, just the object against the background field. The same forward-facing structure is still there, fainter but aligned. Same orientation, same position relative to the nucleus. That agreement matters. When two very different representations point to the same geometry, it lowers the chance this is noise, tracking error, or overprocessing. What we're likely seeing is activity confined to specific regions on the nucleus. Instead of a smooth, isotropic outflow, material is being released along preferred directions. That's consistent with jets. Not jets inferred from modeling, jets visible in morphology. And the timing matters. This image was taken post-perihelion, when many objects begin to lose organized structure as activity weakens. Instead, 3i Atlas is still showing coherence in the inner coma. This doesn't tell us what's driving it yet. Ice composition, thermal stress, rotation, or geometry can all play roles. But it does tell us this object isn't relaxing into a simple, diffuse state. With that in mind, let's move to the next image and see whether this structure holds up across independent observations. This comes from Mario Ferraco captured on December 19, 2025, during the perigee window, when 3i Atlas was moving at extreme apparent speed across the sky. At wide scale, the object appears as a compact source sliding cleanly through a field of streaked stars. That tells us the tracking is correct. The stars smear, the object doesn't. Now focus on the processed frame. When the background is suppressed and the signal is enhanced, the same pattern emerges again. A tight central core, a surrounding envelope, and faint but directionally consistent structure extending from the nucleus. This is not random grain. If this were noise, it would rotate, distort, or disappear between frames. Instead, it stays locked to the object. That's the key point. The brightness and afro plots below reinforce this. Rather than collapsing rapidly, the activity curve holds and then declines gradually, behavior consistent with ongoing sustained emission, not a single flash event. And the orbital geometry shown here matters. At the time of these observations, 3i Atlas was still more than two astronomical units from the Sun, yet showing structured activity that we normally associate with much closer approaches. Frame by frame, the motion is fast, almost startling, but the internal structure remains coherent. The coma doesn't tear apart. The core doesn't smear. That rules out tracking artifacts. It rules out processing tricks. And it strongly suggests the activity we're seeing is intrinsic to the object. So across different observers, different instruments, and different processing pipelines, the same conclusion keeps resurfacing. 3i Atlas isn't just active, it's organized. 
These come from Khan Stoitsis using a Seastar S50 captured minutes apart on the same night. At first glance, these look subtle, but that's the point. What you're seeing here is a very faint extended envelope around 3i Atlas. No heavy processing, no aggressive filters, just long integration revealing what's really there. In the four minute frame, the object appears compact but asymmetric. By nine minutes, that asymmetry becomes clearer. The brightness isn't centered, it's slightly offset, and the surrounding glow isn't evenly distributed. That matters because random noise averages out with time. Real structure doesn't. The elongation you see here lines up with the same general axis identified in higher resolution datasets. Different observer, different instrument, different processing philosophy, same geometry. This isn't a dramatic jet image. It's something more important. Independent confirmation that 3i Atlas is not behaving like a simple, diffuse point source. Even at low resolution, the object refuses to smear into symmetry. The coma remains biased, directional, and that tells us whatever is shaping this object is persistent, not transient. Which brings us to the next question. If small instruments are seeing this, and larger observatories are seeing organized inner structure, what exactly is maintaining it as the object continues to fade? Let's keep going. Now, let's widen the context. This image and video come from Stefan Burns, showing the positional geometry of 3i Atlas on December 27th. This isn't about brightness or detail, it's about alignment. Here, 3i Atlas sits roughly 40 degrees off the Sun-Earth line, positioned to the west in solar coordinates. And crucially, it's riding almost exactly on the ecliptic plane, just slightly south. That alone isn't unusual, but look at what else shares that geometry. At the same time, Sunspot Group 4321 is also near that same plane, compact, rapidly evolving, and, according to Stefan's timeline, its sudden growth begins right as these alignments come into place. The accompanying video tracks that development. You can see the sunspot cluster expand quickly, gaining complexity over a short period. To be clear, this does not imply causation. There's no known physical mechanism linking a distant interstellar object to solar surface activity. But science does pay attention to coincidences that repeat in space and time. What matters here is geometry, timing, and correlation. We now have structure confirmed near the nucleus, persistent asymmetry across independent observers, and a precise spatial context showing where 3i Atlas sits relative to the Sun-Earth system during this phase. None of this proves anything extraordinary, but it does tighten the puzzle. So the question isn't, what is it? The question is, what does this geometry allow us to rule out? And what does it force us to take seriously? Let's move to the next update. A lunar impact flash was detected and confirmed by Armagh Observatory and Planetarium. A brief, sharp burst of light on the lunar surface. Exactly what you'd expect when a small meteoroid impacts the moon at high speed. Events like this happen more often than people realize, but we rarely catch them live and even more rarely with independent confirmation. It's a reminder of something important. Space isn't static. It's active, dynamic, and constantly interacting with Earth's neighborhood. From interstellar objects like 3i Atlas to impacts happening right now on the moon, we're watching a system in motion. So here's the real question. Are we just getting better at seeing these events? Or are we entering a period where the solar system itself is becoming more active? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to keep following space updates like this, make sure you're subscribed. More data is coming, and we'll break it down one image at a time.